My name is Dr. Paul Arnold. I'm a practicing urologist out of Tarpon Springs, Florida. I'm a partner with Urology Specialist of West Florida, and I'm the Chief of Staff at Florida Hospital North Pinellas. Today I'm here to discuss the new T1470 Super Pulse Pro Touch laser. I've been treating BPH with lasers for over 12 years. The ProTouch laser is being made available for the first time at the AUA. I have been using the laser on and off for the past 12 months. I have taught many physicians throughout the country on the technique of the green light laser. I have personally performed over 1,500 green light laser procedures. So what is the T1470 SuperPulse ProTouch laser? The convergent laser technologies and its T1470 laser is a 1470 nanometer diode laser. This innovative technology allows you to reset, enucleate, vaporize, ablate, or incise any prostate tissues. The T1470 diode laser is a phosphate diode laser. It has a reduced zone of thermal and coagulation necrosis. The patent pending uh, pulse parameters will allow you to both enhance your vaporization and the cutting abilities of this laser. The T1470 wavelength has three main absorption coefficients. It is absorbed by intracellular and extracellular water, oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin, and also fats and lipids. This laser is used for cutting, ablating, vaporizing, or resecting any soft tissues. It is not prostate specific. It can be used on multiple specialties. Its high absorption in water basically eliminates any free beaming or any danger that you can cause to distant structures within the bladder or on the trigone. The laser also cuts extremely well and you're able to resect out tissue and also have hemostasis with very little collateral necrosis. In my experience, this laser cuts as well, if not better, than a CO2 or homium laser. It also can coagulate better than any other laser I've used in the past. The zones of thermal and coagulation necrosis are less than any other lasers I've ever used. The super pulsed laser is highly absorbed in both water, but also in fat and lipids, which allows it to coagulate very, very well. The Mila technique is very exciting to me because it allows you to the, use the two fibers that this T1470 uh, uses, both an end firing and a side firing fiber. The end firing fiber will resect or enucleate the median lobe with very little bleeding and excellent hemostasis. And then following that, you can switch to a side firing fiber and ablate both lateral lobes. This will end up with an excellent result and a very open channel at the end of your Mila procedure. Here is a Mila procedure that I performed early on in my experience. You can see going in with cystoscopy that the patient has a median lobe, is obstructing, and what I first do is I find at the bladder neck, I use between 65 to 70 watts of power. We're using an end firing fiber, which is quickly vaporizing technique and enucleating the median lobe. Once I establish the plane, I'm able then to work in that plane up towards the bladder neck. As you can see, I'm using a ring retractor during this procedure to allow to help me separate the tissues during my enucleation of the median lobe. As you can see, there is very minimal bleeding throughout this live procedure. And then at the four o'clock and seven o'clock positions, using the end firing fiber at integrate, in an integrate technique from the bladder neck to the verumontanum to establish the depth of your surgical planes to begin your enucleation. So I keep making my plane at the four o'clock and seven o'clock position, uh, and slowly I nucleate the median lobe.
median lobe is too large in my determination, I'm able to either split it in half down the middle with the end firing fiber or in different pieces before I enucleate. Then I'm able to remove it from the bladder with either a basket or grasping, grasping forceps. And if there's any bleeding at the bladder neck, once the median lobe is enucleated, I'm able to use the end firing fiber and coagulate that bleeding instantaneously as if it was a bovie on a stick. Once the median lobe is completely enucleated, then I use grasping forceps to grab the floating median lobe in the bladder and remove it from the patient. Now that I have enucleated the median lobe, I have now switched to the side firing fiber and begin my ablation of both the floor and the lateral lobes. I'm using a sweeping rotating technique from both the right and the left in a near contact position with the, with the side firing fiber. I've created an open channel and I will continue to ablate the lateral lobes using my rotating technique. It is very important to keep the fiber in a near contact position. You don't want to constantly lay it on the tissue. However, at the same time, you don't want it too far a distance away from the tissue. So you want it as close to the tissue as possible to allow for the increased energy to get absorbed and ablate the tissue efficiently. In my last Mila procedures, I've used 70 watts of power for my end firing when using the end firing fiber. However, when I switched to the side firing fiber, I increased the energy to between 85 and 90 watts. In my last several cases, I've used 88 watts of power, which is more than enough for efficient vaporization of the lateral tissue. When using the T1470 Super Pulse Pro Touch laser, and we're using this with a vaporizing or ablating technique, proper technique is very important. You're going to be using a side firing fiber and you want to keep the fiber in near contact position. So you want it as close to the tissue as possible without direct contact. You want to be rotating the fiber to the right and the left and when you're in the right distance at the right speed you will see a bubble train coming from each side of the fiber. That will maximize your vaporization or ablation coefficient. However, when you move the fiber away from the tissue, you would decrease the amount of vaporization you get. This will maximize your vaporizing technique. This makes this laser fiber very safe when using it. And then also, you're able to take the cystoscope and move it in unison with the fiber, both from the bladder neck back to the virgum montanum while you're rotating the fiber. I generally remove the enucleated tissue at the end of the case with the grasping forceps and in the process of removing the tissue it may cause some bleeding at the prostatic bed. So then I will go back in with either the end firing or side firing fiber to coagulate any necessary bleeders which is very easily done and efficiently done using this laser. Some of the advantages with this laser that I'm extremely excited about is number one, its efficacy. It's extremely efficient and especially when using the end firing fiber in resecting or enucleating tissue. Number two, it's a coagulation. I've never seen a laser that is able to coagulate so well yet at the same time not increase the irritative symptoms. I've been very surprised about the short duration of irritative symptoms that these patients have had postoperatively. In my limited experience, the irritative symptoms that are seen sometimes after these procedures and are expected, however, 
the duration seems to be less than I originally expected. I believe this laser is very easy to use and once you learn the proper technique, it is very safe, efficient, and coagulates very well in the treatment of symptomatic BPH. In summary, on the T1470 Super Pulse Pro Touch laser, I'm very excited about this new technology. I think it increases our armamentarium techniques that we are able to use in the treatment of symptomatic BPH, especially with lasers.